everybody, it's Rebecca here at Lime Mermaids, and it's time for a tag. I haven't done a tag in a really long time, and I'm really excited about this, so let's get into it. I'm doing the audiobook 2.0 tag. This tag was created by Today in Jen's Library and Soul Mean Sun, and I'll post a link to the original video down below in both of their channels. And I was tagged by the lovely Trina at Between Chapters uh, a while ago, and I made the video, and then I never posted it, and now it's not up to date, so I'm refilming this because I have been a slacker. I'm out of my slacking ways, that's probably a lie, but let's get into the tag. It's all about audiobooks, which is really great, because I love audiobooks. Number one, name a book that was better on audio. Let's see, I read Emma a couple, like two years ago, a year ago. I did a read along with the book Emma by Jane Austen, because I needed to read it, because I've never read it before. And I had a really hard time with it. It was really slow. It was draggy, so I listened to it on audio for part of it, and that really helped because it was read by this cute old British lady, and it, it just it helped me get into the moment, into the the zone, and I could zone out a little bit, and that was okay. Where I have a hard time zoning out when I'm reading it, because then I feel bad. But audio, it's okay. So that one was better for me, and then also Anansi Boys by Neil Gaiman. I again was trying to finish reading it. Uh, in a very short amount of time because I did a year of gaming project two years ago, which was pretty cool if I'll link it down below so you can see uh, And so I was trying to finish it up and I was running out of time So I was coloring and I listened to it and it was really good It, it, it really got me into the, the mood more with the accents I didn't realize it had all these Jamaican accents and I really liked it these island accents So I recommend it. It was a lot. It was really good. The book is still really good but I did like the audio a lot. Number two, name a book that was worse on audio than in print and you actually switched. Uh, there's two, I believe, ish. So the first one was The Good Luck of Right Now by Matthew Quick. I just could not get into this book on audio, like at all. I did not like the narrator. So I was trying to just finish the book at that point. So I think I just picked it up on like ebook from the library just to power through the end of it because I was having a really hard time. And the other one is not necessarily that the audiobook was bad. It's just that sometimes I have a hard time processing audiobooks, especially if it's like fantasy and like weird things are happening. I zone out or I just can't see it. So I do better with certain books reading them. And so I was reading The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater. I was listening to it and the narrator is really good. He's like this really great, he's, a, he's an actor and I forget who he is, but he's really great. And I liked him a lot, but I could not follow it and so I actually had to stop and start rereading from the beginning on print and I realized how much I'd missed. So that was a bad experience for me just because I zoned out, not because the narration was bad. Number three, top narrators, both female and male. I don't have a top female narrator. I don't think I've read any book by the same narrator besides like celebrity ones and I don't, those don't count. However, I do have a favorite male narrator and he is a celebrity but he's not reading memoirs. He's reading his like other stuff and it's Dan Stevens, and oh my gosh, if you haven't listened to anything read by Dan Stevens, you are seriously missing out. Like, go do it. Go download them. He has a very long list. If you don't know who Dan Stevens is, he's Matthew Crawley from Downton Abbey, also is The Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Like, he's, ugh, I, I love him. I highly recommend it. He's a really, really, he's a, a smart dude, and he reads, he narrates audiobooks. He did like Frankenstein and James Bond ones. I haven't listened to these, but he also does like Agatha Christie. So I've listened to two or three by him now and I'm obsessed, like I can't get enough. I'm tempted to get an Audible account just so that I can listen to more of his narrations because my library only has three and it's very sad. I highly recommend, I'm serious, like I can't, it's ruined other audiobooks for me. No one is as good as Dan Stevens. Number four, what's the longest book that you've listened to? I think it's Creativity Inc, which was really good. I mean, Emma's technically the longest one, but I didn't listen to the whole thing. So I think the longest one is Creativity Inc. We're just gonna go with that. I really liked it, that was another good one. Number five, what's the shortest book? I think it was Wishful Drinking by Carrie Fisher which was really good. Also, I think only five minutes difference. It was Boy by Roald Dahl, narrated by Dan Stevens, by the way. And both of those, it was like a five minute difference. So those were both really short and both really good. And I really liked them. Number six, how do you listen to your audiobooks? And this is like a very broad, like lots of technical question. I mostly listen to them on my phone. Like all, all that's how I listen to them is on my phone. I usually listen to them when I'm blow drying my hair. I just listen with earbuds, like skull candy earbuds or whatever, because they are pretty good at blocking out the sound. And I just listen while I blow dry my hair. And I'm like, shh, and they're like talking and it's great. It's like a good like 30 minute period 
of time there. So I listen to it headphones and then once I'm done blow drying I take out the headphones and just blare it. And then I also listen to it in my car. So it's my phone in my car. That's right. It's not just my phone. So my phone in my car on the way to work and, and commuting and driving around, I plug in an audiobook and listen to it that way. And I use mostly overdrive, like the app from the library. I get them all for free from the library. Occasionally if I get like a free book I'll use Audible or if you know I decide to cave and get an account so I can just listen to all the Dan Stevens I could ever want with my life, then yeah, I'll listen to it through there. But generally speaking, it's overdrive on my phone or the car. Number seven, should authors narrate their own books? Yes and no, it depends. Are they good at it? Do they have a skill? Then yes, absolutely. Celebrity memoirs are perfect. They're, I love them when they're narrated by the celebrity because it's their life and they're really good at it and they know the stories and they're good at acting and like inflections and stuff. It's great. Other ones, not so much. So it really just depends. Eight, is there any audiobook you wish could be redone and by what narrator? And I don't really have an answer for this because I don't I don't really know. But also I just think all books should be re reread by Dan Stevens. Yeah. Nine, best audiobook you've listened to or favorite audiobook. I really liked Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, who, who reads it, and he's really funny. And then Creativity Inc. was read by a, an old man, and it was cute, and I really liked that one. And that was a very inspirational book for me. And then I also, again, really liked Boy by Roald Dahl, read by Dan Stevens. Like, seriously, it was so good. I loved it so much. He was so good. At, he's so good at narrating it. It felt like I was there. Like he was like my grandpa telling me stories from when he was a young man, as a young man, if that makes sense, because Dan Stevens is a young dude. I don't know, it was just really good and I really loved it and I love Dan Stevens. Like I think the only reason I liked The Timekeeper is because he read it, let's be honest. Because he did a really good job. Anyway, I'll stop with my gushing, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Number 10, what's the most recent audiobook you've listened to? I started The View from the Cheap Seats by Neil Gaiman, but I had to give it back to the library before I finished it, so I'm kind of laying there and wait on that one, and he is narrating that one. I'm currently like two hours away from finishing Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert, so I'm kind of in the middle of those two right now. I have And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie on deck, which is read by Dan Stevens. Oh because of course it is. I just got it in from the library, I'm very excited. And, but the last one I finished I think is The Timekeeper by Mitch Album, read by Dan Stevens. Again, I'm obsessed, I'm, a, I'm currently obsessed. Like you should go listen, go do it. Even just the, the previews on Audible and you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean, it's so good. Here's a bonus question, book that's currently not on audio that you wish was on audio. And I don't have an answer for this so you let me know. Give me your answer in the description in the comments below. Well that's it for audiobook tag 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know your favorite audiobook. What should I listen to next? So get me off of my Dan Stevens, like who is a good narrator? Who would I enjoy listening to almost as much as Dan Stevens? It's not going to happen. You're not going to top him, but who can I listen to next? So after, you know, anyway, to get me out, to help me move on. To help me move on. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Sorry about my like rambling of lust and love and infatuation and just ear candy, eye candy, all of the above. Anyway, thanks for that. Thanks for watching. That's it for me today. I'll see you next time.